Art with Mr. Posey. Asian Art Part 1 Kanji Hi again, Cole Colts. It's Mr. Posey. Nice to see you. I'm going to talk a little bit about a project which has to do with Asian art, specifically something called kanji and something called katakana. So let's talk about the kanji part first. Kanji is a system of writing that came from China, which they also use in Japan, which is a picture that represents a word or an idea. For example, tiger has its own kanji or symbol. So here's what you can do for this project. Below there is a link and that link says click here to translate from English into Chinese kanji. If you click that it's going to take you to Google Translate. So this is Google Translate. You can see on the left is the place where you type in your English word where it says enter text. So I can type in tiger and then on the right is where it will show you the Chinese simplified kanji that represents that word. And for tiger, that looks like this. So that's the first part. Choose a word and translate it into a Chinese kanji. From there, you can use that little kanji or that symbol to make a piece of art. So I copied my symbol for tiger onto this little paper so I can remember what it looks like. And now I'm going to copy it onto my big paper. So I'm going to look at it and try to just follow the shapes. I've sped this up a little bit so you don't have to sit here watching me draw for a long time. But I'm looking at how each shape fits together, trying to kind of put a light line to let me know where it is. Now I'm going to try to make it a little fancier. So I have my markers and crayons and I have my sharpie. Now I'm going to do an outline around it. So if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm making it into almost like a block letter. There's the line in the middle and when I trace it with the sharpie, I'm going around that line, almost like there's a little force field that's a little bit farther away from the pencil line and that creates the shape. From here, I can just kind of go for it and do whatever designs, colors, and decorations that I want to, and I have no real plan here. I'm just kind of going for it. I'm doing some blending of colors with some crayons. Oops, broke my yellow. I'm doing some stripes and patterns, maybe even just some little squigglies, and then I'm gonna draw a picture of the thing that the symbol represents. So here's my little tiger. I'm just drawing this tiger out of my imagination. I don't really need to look at a picture. I think the tiger that's in my mind is a little more special than copying one. But if you want to copy one from a picture, you could definitely do that. I'm filling it in with some markers here. You can use whatever materials you have at home. We all don't have the same stuff at home, so just use what you have. And we'll do the black stripes here and kind of fix the face a little where I colored over it with my orange. And I have my cute little cartoony tiger at the bottom. And I think I might do a nice black outline around that too. Just kind of holds it all together. And then I have my little tiger. Maybe I'm going to decorate my kanji just a little bit more, fill it up. So once again, I'm just playing, just doing some designs, decorations, patterns, staying inside that line. You can do this really any way you want. You don't have to do a block letter kanji like I did. You could do it much different if you have a different idea. I'm going to put the word so I can remember at the top here, tiger, and then sign my name at the bottom. So I hope that you make some kanji art. We did learn about this in third grade, but it's great for all grades to try this out. And what you can do is if you make a piece of kanji art, you can put it in our Google Drive folder, which is for student art, and we will put that up in our student art gallery. Thank you, and I'm excited to see your kanji art.